Hey everybody, it's David Pingry with Upshift Online. We're here today with our KTM Adventure 790R and I uh, want to talk to you today a little bit about just getting your suspension set up. Anybody that gets a new bike, this is something you really need to address and try to get uh, kind of fine-tuned for your weight, your riding ability, the places you're going to be riding. Are you doing a lot of off-road? Is it aggressive off-road? So we're going to give you some basic setup points today. And I want to start with the shock. So it's really important that you get a, an accurate sag number. Somebody who weighs 150 pounds is going to have a much different sag number than someone who's 210 or 250 pounds. So the way you're going to adjust that, if you look on the back of your bike on the left-hand side, there's a little hash line that says sag right on it. Okay, at that point, from there straight down to the axle, you're going to take a tape measure and you want to be between 85 and 90 millimeters of sag when you're sitting on the bike. So you need to fully lift it up, measure it, and then sit on the bike, have a friend or your girlfriend or wife look at it again and make sure that there's an 85 to 90 millimeter sag ratio in there. Uh, that's going to kind of ensure that your the back end of the bike is working right. And you do that simply with this five millimeter Allen. It drops right into the shock. There's a you can't miss it, it's the only hole on there, and that adjusts your preload. Uh, that'll change your sag number, obviously, up or down. If you go in, it's going to be more firm. Turn it out, it's going to soften it and give you more sag. So re read that number, try to figure out what that is, and get into that 85 to 90 millimeter range. When we move up to the forks, it gets a little bit more vague on how to adjust this. We don't have a specific number. You're going to have to just ride it, but there are ways to adjust it. You'll see right here, these metal flanges, that's your preload for the fork. So when this is unweighted, these should move counterclockwise, a quarter turn or, or more here to over to plus six. And as you turn that clockwise, that's going to adjust preload. It's going to add preload. So just imagine as though you're screwing it down, you're putting pressure on that fork spring, which is going to cause the front end of the bike to ride a little taller. If when you're out riding, it feels like the front end is dropping down, it's sort of stink bug, feels like the front end's low into the stroke, that means you need to add a little bit of preload to this fork. So I would go maybe to the three at first, see how that feels, give that a try. If it still feels soft, then move all the way to six and just fine tune it. Make sure that if you do it to the right side, you do the same thing to the left side, okay? There's a couple other good adjustments here that we want to talk about. The red knob here in the center is your rebound. So if you're out on a trail and you feel like it drops into the stroke and then returns really quickly, kind of pops the front end up, that means your rebound is too quick. So same with the preload. By screwing that in clockwise, you're slowing the rebound down. Uh, it's just basically closing an orifice that allows the oil to move through slower. So it's not going to spring back so quickly. It's going to return a little bit slower. Uh, that's a, a really good feature. You can do it on the fly while you're riding. So if you're on a trail and it feels like the front end's kind of bouncing, try slowing that down. Go, you know, quarter turn at a time. It, it actually moves in clicks, so you can just try a click or two. Um, but play with that, see what it does, and get comfortable adjusting it. When we come over here to the left side, this white lever here is your compression. So if you're riding on the trails again and you feel like it's too soft, it's diving down into the stroke too easily, uh, maybe even bottoming out. You'll feel it kind of come metal to metal and stop at the bottom of the stroke. Try adjusting this compression. So again, by going clockwise, this adjuster will make this valving stiffer essentially. So it's going to be a more firm feel as it goes down. And if you get too much into that, you dial it in too much, it's going to have a firm feeling. You're going to get a lot of feedback into the bars. It's going to feel kind of stiff and harsh. So dial it back off counterclockwise. That'll soften it again. Again, this is very much rider preference. It's going to change based on your weight, your skill level, the type of terrain you're riding. So you're going to have to get out on the bike, see how it feels, and make adjustments based on your personal preferences. One more tool you can use to kind of gauge how much travel you're using on the front end is by moving these little rubber O-rings up. So by sliding these up before you go out on a ride, you can see at the end of your ride how far down they've been pushed. If you're only coming down to maybe half stroke and you've been riding off-road and hitting big bumps, you might have your fork a little too stiff. Uh, you want to open up that compression adjuster and, and soften it up a little bit. However, if this red O-ring is at the very bottom of the fork at the end of a ride, uh, that might be a good indicator that you need to firm up the fork a little bit, maybe add some preload to keep it riding a little taller. So keep an eye on this. And one thing to note, if you just leave this thing for multiple rides, it may work its way down and just be sitting at the bottom. That doesn't mean you're bottoming it out. It has to be kind of reset and then ridden once and then checked. 
uh, because just the vibration will actually work it down to the bottom of the cork, fork over time. So I know we've covered a lot of ground today on setup and I just want to encourage you if you're worried about moving clickers and adjustment settings because you're afraid you'll mess it up, just make a note of where it, where it is stock, where you started. And then you can always come back to that if you kind of get lost and, and get really into some weird settings. Uh, I think a big mistake people make is they, they just don't want to screw it up so they don't mess with it at all. And really it's up to you to get to know what these clickers do, what these adjusters do, and how that affects the handling of your bike. And I think you'll find if you get it set up right, you're going to be a lot happier with your KTM. So don't be afraid to mess with those things. I hope we've helped you and steered you in the right direction. Enjoy your KTM Adventure 790R.